Hello and welcome back to the Easy Clones demo series. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can add any property to a clone systems delay. So I'm just going to jump in and get started. As you can see, I've got this grid here. I'm just going to quickly make a clone system out of these. So I'm just going to call this grid. I don't want any colors and I want them to remain in their position. And I'm going to click OK. So what you'll notice this time, because I didn't put in any colors, the control layer itself only has the easy clones effect and none of the color options. And if you click on the clones, they don't have the random color effect either. So I'm just going to quickly do an animation of these squares sliding into position from the left of the screen and I'm just going to easy ease these quickly like so so if I preview this you'll see we get this grid sliding on like so now let's say once we've got this to slide on we wanted them to draw off so what we, to do this, we're going to use trim paths. So if we just add a trim path effect, and we're going to be basically wanting to animate the start from zero to 100%, like so. And here you'll see this bottom shape begins to draw itself off like so. So what I'm going to quickly do is just copy this trim path and paste it onto all of our clone layers. And now if I preview, you'll see they draw, they slide into position and then they draw off. But obviously this is a little, little disappointing as it just draws off as it is. And I'd love it to be synced up with the delay of the clone itself. Now, the way you would do this before would be to sit and offset the keyframes. So obviously we're set to a two frame delay. So you'd have to select all of these layers, knock them forward two frames, come to the next one, two frames. So we build this stagger animation like so, I'm not going to build it all because it takes ages to do, but you can see now they will start to draw off in sequence. So I'm just going to press Command Z a couple of times until we are back to with all of our keyframes in the same position. <clears throat> and now I'm going to be showing you how you can add this to our clone system by using the delay effect. So all you need to do is select your keyframes, come over to the fifth button here, which is called Delay Expressions. And when you click on this one, it's gonna open up a dialog window. And again, it's gonna give you an option to pick which clone system you wanna add the expression to. So if we had multiple clone systems here, we'd have multiple items listed in this dropdown but we only have grids and that's what I wanted to add it to. So I'm gonna click okay. And now you'll notice all of these properties that we had selected have an expression on them. And what this now does is links up our delay. So now if I just preview this, you see our clones begin to draw off like so. And this is Linked to our delay here, so I could change this to 10 frames and you'll see how this all affects. Obviously 10 frames is quite extreme, so our first one will begin to draw off before they've all even come into, into their resting position from the first animation. But that's how you can quickly and easily add more properties to your delay. And if I show you one frame, this will be super quick once we get a preview going. So they slide in and draw off. I'm just going to show you another example. 
So I have built this simple animation here, let's just zoom in, of a square that jumps, it transforms to a circle and then has a little squash and stretch at the bottom here. Um, I'm just going to build a new composition and I'm just going to call this time remapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this pre-comp in here and I'm going to build a clone system using the pre-comp. I'm just going to call this jump. I will go for two layers and click OK. Obviously I didn't hit go to the center but the pre-comp is already in the center anyways so wherever this is positioned it's going to look like it's in the center. So what I'm going to do quickly is just duplicate a few of these pre-comps and let's just add some randomness to the X position. Uh, let's go like this and let's get a seed where we can see all of our clones like so. So what we can do now is if we preview this, let's just zoom in here about three seconds, you'll see all of our pre-comps are jumping at the same time. So we're just going to right click on this first one and add a time remapping. And what we're going to do is just select these keyframes <clears throat> and we're going to add our delay expression. And we're going to click OK. And then I'm just going to copy this time remap, making sure that my playhead is on the first keyframe. And I'm going to paste it onto all of our pre comps. And let's just quickly add a blue in here, like so. So now you'll see our pre comps are jumping at different times. And if we change the source name here, you'll see they are called jump, clone one, two, and three. So like anything else, we can just quickly come in here and change the individual delay. So then there'll be more of a delay between our pre-comps jumping. So that's an example of how you can build a custom animation within a pre-comp and then chuck that into a clone system like so. I'm gonna move into the next example. <coughs> Here we've got a composition with these four balls and they are just sliding across our screen. And what I would want to happen here is when our balls come to these lines, I want these lines to open up as if they're gates. So they open, allow our balls to go through and then they close behind them. So I've already kind of built a rig for this. So here I've got all these lines and a mask layer, which is a line on top, but with just a, a thicker stroke. So what we're going to do quickly is just select all of our line layers. Like so. And we are just going to make these alpha mats. So basically our masks are now making these lines visible. So on the first mask, I'm just going to come to the position in time where, so the next frame is where we've hit the gate. So at that point, we want it to be open. So I'm just going to add a trim path to this mask. And here I'm going to be animating the start and end positions. Um, so this is open. So I'm going to push this back 10 frames. So this is the last frame where we want it to be fully open. And we're going to just animate these to 50%. And I believe that should cause it to open up. Ah, okay. This is the wrong way around. So what we actually want is this set to alpha inverted. Like so. Now our keyframes are the wrong way around. Let's just adjust that. Like so. So now you'll see as they come close to it, it begins to open, but I want it to just kind of open as soon as it gets very close. So I'm just going to push it back there. So when we come forward one frame, it's very close. 
and it opens up allowing our balls to go through. So what I'm going to do now is quickly select all of our line layers again because I selected alpha matte and I should have gone for inverted matte. So I'm just going to quickly change these to the inverted mask. And I'm going to copy this trim path effect. Whoop. Copy trim path onto all of our mask layers. Like so. One more. And hit you. So here's all of our keyframes. Whoop. What have I done here? It's going to hit you. There we go. So here's all of our keyframes. So now if we preview, you'll see our gates open to allow our clones to go through like so. So what we're going to do is just select all of our keyframes here and we're going to hit the delay expression and we're going to add it to the balls system and we're going to click OK. So now if we preview, we will see our gates are opening up the inverted way, which is not what we want. I'm just going to quickly hit U and select all of these line layers and I'm just going to shy them because so we don't need to see them. So what we want to do here is reverse the direction. So we're just going to select all of our mask layers here and we're going to renumber them so 10 is at the top so now when we preview we get our gates opening like so and i think the timing is a little bit too tight so i'm just going to select all these keyframes and knock them forward one more frame, just so we can see that opening nicely, like so. And now we have these gates opening as our ball goes through. Still feels tight, I'm gonna knock it. One more. And then what I'm gonna do is what I want. So roughly around here, I'd like it to end again. So then you'll see it opens up and then closes, catching close to the back of this clone here, our final clone layer. That's a bit too close, but let's just knock that out a bit more, like so. And then here we can just copy all of these like so on these layers I should have animated this on first but never mind so now when we preview we have our balls driving through these gates and they respond and open and close to allow them to drive through so there's another example of how easy it is to build animations and sync it up with our delay of our easy clones effect here and this will obviously be flexible so we can change these numbers and it will all respond that is all for the easy clones demo series there's one more video where i will be showing you a walkthrough of some example animations i've already built using easy clones uh, be sure to check that one out for more ideas of st ways you can build stuff using easy clones and hopefully it'll give you some ideas. Thank you for watching the videos and I hope you enjoyed the tool.